with CLR James, the brother um, from Trinidad as well, one of the great Pan-African minds that we produced away from home. Uh, the island of Trinidad has produced a number of Africans, and one of the first was Henry Sylvester Williams. Of course, in 1900, had the first Pan-African Congress. A lot of people say W.B. Du Bois had the first Pan-African Congress in, um, in England, but it was eight in, in, in Paris, 1919. But it was A. Sylvester Williams from Trinidad, a lawyer, who did it in 1900 in England. George Padmore changed his name. A lot of them wrote under pen names. Uh, Malcolm Nurse, he came to England to study. And basically, um, when he was in England, working with a number of people, including a brother by the name of Ross McConan, who was also from the West Indies, they started talking about organizing for African people. He spent a, he spent a few years in the Soviet Union, learning from the Marxists and the, uh, learning from people like Lenin, uh, he was there with, with Stalin was there, um, along with C.L.R. James, Lace, uh, not Langston Hughes, well, Langston Hughes too, but Richard Wright was another brother who went there. And they, they went all over the world trying to figure out what would be the best plan for African people. And a number of young students came under their influence, one of which was Kwame Nkrumah, who was in school, who went to London, along with Nanamdi Ezekiwe, who, was at, uh, who would eventually become the first prime minister of uh, Nigeria, who just passed, by the way. Zeke just died a, few months ago, a couple of months ago, last month, actually, I think. Um, Yomo Kenyatta, who became the first prime minister of uh, Kenya, and others, they met at this man's house and sat at his table around table while he and C.L.R. James and others would talk. Uh, Marcus Garvey's first wife, Amy Ashwood Garvey, not Amy Jacques Garvey, the second wife, but his first wife who basically they say gave Marcus Garvey a lot of the ideas for terms of African for the, African for the Africans, who by the way also came to Ghana, was in stool as a queen with the Ashanti. Um, Amy Ashwood Garvey also influenced his brother. And when those young students who came under the influence of these Africans from all over the world, most of which who weren't born on the continent of Africa, you know, because Marcus Garvey never set foot on the continent of Africa. When these young students came under the influence of people like Padmore, who was a driving force, when they, they, they told them, you can rule your countries, and these can become a United States of Africa for African people, and we can all come home. When Nkrumah became the prime minister, one of the first men he sent for was his teacher. He said, come home. That's right. Teach. Teach. And Padmore came back, and they had a vision for this to be the beginning. So when Patrice Lumumba in the Congo needed help, and Krumah said, you come here. And he trained his army. Sekou Jure in Guinea. He said, you come here. And when they overthrew Nkrumah, Sekou Jure said, you come to Guinea be the president with me, co-president. You see, because they don't understand. When Europe moved against Nkrumah, they moved against men like George Padmore, who didn't leave. They put this man under house arrest. They, they enclosed him in this country, the Black Star. That's George Padmore. When we see Nkrumah's grave, you see the Black Star. This is this man's idea, Malcolm Nurse, birth name. And so when he passed, he went by the boards, a relatively obscure figure, until, of course, President Rollins came along and said, we must revive that. And so I just wanted to say, you know, these are our holy shrines, John Kennedy and... Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and George the Third. These are national figures to Europeans, but this man here, born of a small island in the West Indies. It, it just thank you, this man, in Trinidad, went to England, met up with continental Africans, and here we stand on the kind of Africa in a nation named Ghana, primarily because of the work of a man like this and women and men that you can count on one or two names. And so we stand here. This is a holy shrine for us. Yeah. An international shrine for Africa. Yeah. This man gave his life. Yeah. Must have gave it to stand here and even to think to talk about it. So he's buried here. I think we just want to do a little ritual. Maybe at least recognize it.